On today's episode of Titus and Tate, do you know how to talk to your children about the possibility of Bruce Pearl winning a national championship? <laughs> Character not, counts, kids. You should probably figure that out because Auburn is very, 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 very good. Very They're good. not a good team, Tate. They're not a good team. They're a great team, mm. as, they, uh, as they say. Auburn goes on the road, beats Alabama, which uh, if, if you want to be an Auburn hater, you would say... Why is beating an inconsistent Alabama team what is getting everybody excited about Alabama? I'll explain. Or about Auburn, I'm sorry. I'll explain. Mm. I'll explain why. Um, because I, I came away from that. That was my that was probably my favorite game of the year in college basketball. Yeah. So far. I don't know if it was the best game, but it was my favorite. Just the 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 energy in there, the the plays that were being made. It was crazy. Yeah, I learned a lot in that game. Yeah. And I think you you said it at the top. Bruce Pearl might be on his way to the <laughs> national might, title. He's gonna win a national championship. It's gonna Oof. happen. Uh also, we're kind of burying the lead. Down goes Baylor Tate, the number yes. one team in the country. Since we last did a podcast, the number one team in the country has lost. Uh the number five team in the country has lost, almost lost twice, almost lost to Oregon State at home. Uh USC also lost. There are mm. no more undefeated in college basketball. Harrison Ingram. Pop the champagne, 76 Hoosiers. The record is, is still, in, still intact. Uh, we'll talk about Texas Tech, who is who is surging in a big way. Oh, my God. They're playing some good basketball right now. Is Chris Beard still coaching Texas Tech somehow? It feels like that. They have the same energy that they had with Chris right. Beard, but he's no longer Looks there. Like, yeah. But is he? Is it the ghost of Chris what, Beard? What the hell is going on there? We don't know. Uh, John Shire got a W filling in for Coach K. Some are saying he's a better that. coach than yeah. Coach K. Let Should the, Coach K just go ahead and leave? Let the controversy begin there. <laughs> uh, also, we have Kenny Blakeney on the show. Speaking of Duke, uh, uh, if you don't know Kenny Blakeney's name, he uh, played at Duke from from 91. I think he was a redshirt in the 91 team. He's still, still got a ring. Got a ring in 92. He's got a ring in 91. Mm -hmm. uh, played at Duke for Coach K forever. He is now the head coach at Howard, who uh, will yes. be playing Notre Dame on Fox on Monday, MLK Day. Uh, a big celebration of, of MLK Day, Howard, uh, HBCU there in D.C., as we know. So uh, this game was supposed to happen last year, Tate. We remember Gus Johnson came on the show and, and told us all this. It was amazing. Howard. Miss um, Gus. So go back and listen to that interview, by the way. Yeah, that was one of my favorites. That it's one of those ones that slipped through the cracks in the pandemic. You yeah. kind of forget that you did. That, that was, was the amazing. that was the best interview we've probably ever done. Yeah. I remember someone, uh, some journalism person, uh, reached out to me and was like, dude, that was, that was awesome. That one moment where Gus started his story and you just kind of gave it space to breathe and all this. And I was like, I was I I I was so in over my head I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I was like I, I wasn't that wasn't good journalism. That was just me like shell shocked. Like holy shit, this no, moment is bigger than I am capable of. No, Tom Rinaldi for the people at home that don't know this, he actually comes to Fox now and, and teaches us how to do the yes, interviews. That's how it works. He's like pregnant pause. Hold, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Not my tempo, <laughs> but go. Uh, so Kenny Blakeney joined uh, joined us for a little bit and, and talked to him about uh, about the big game coming on Monday and, and how excited he is for that. Also, Fraud Friday. Uh, got, got a Fraud Power Rankings. Woo. It is a loaded show. All that is coming up at first. Woody Durham. All right, what do we want to start with, Tate? Uh, Baylor, I guess that's probably the news. I mean, it feels sort of old news because it was it was Tuesday, uh, and, and we're recording this on Friday, Tuesday night. Baylor loses at home to Texas Tech, but uh, that's probably the big news, right? I, yeah. I, we, we, we recorded a show Tuesday morning, and I picked Scott Drew as my king of the mountain in college basketball. It was right on time. As yeah. soon as you get crowned king, that's when you fall off. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I, I believe the phrase I used was, he has college basketball by the balls right now. Yes. Um, there, is, there is no stopping this man. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, and Texas Tech, Adonis Arms. What a great name! What a great name! It's like <laughs> what a an insane Greek god. Basketball name. <laughs> <laughs> what an insane, just a, a, a crazy it plays out of his mind. Uh, this was a great example. Of my, my my broad view of this game, great example of a game that is defensive minded. That is a quote unquote slugfest. That is a mm. man's game. That that a guy like me, who's a who's a, a big time softy, would want no part of. Um, but still a great basketball game, like still a lot of uh, great skill involved. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there, it's a rarity in college basketball where you get like a, a a slugfest like this, and it's like still appealing to watch and doesn't just devolve into like a, a Mick Cronin Cincinnati era <laughs> basketball game. You know what I mean? Those are the best of times. Yeah. the seventeen uh, eighteen brawls. So this was that sweet spot where I was like, this is a man's game. This is this is uh, it, it, if if you do not know how to guard, if you do not know how to play physical, get the ball on this court. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not like they're just brawling out there, and uh, you know the the it, it doesn't resemble basketball. It's still basketball. Texas Tech was making big shot after big shot, 
McCuller, who's not even 100%, has the bum ankle, like, re-aggravates it during this game. Uh, I know Adonis Arms, like, had the better stat line, had the big dunk on Meyer and all that, but... Uh, oh, Banner was great in this game, too. I, I think this also kind of... If you weren't really paying attention to Texas Tech, you now see that they're going to be a team come tournament yeah. time to reckon with for real. We now understand when going into this season, uh, you would just kind of... When, when you're doing previews, you talk about Texas Tech with just, like, a brush broad stroke of like Pretty lost good. Chris Beard, <laughs> but I think the culture's good. Terrence Shannon's back. Yeah. Add Kevin O'Banner. They have some pieces and then you move on. And but you don't really understand like how those pieces are going to fit, what it's going to look like with Mark Adams as the coach. We're starting to understand what it looks like. Uh Texas Tech is on a uh, uh whether what they won three I think they lost at Iowa State without without they're two and one in conference. They're they yeah. they uh they they are they're on a three game winning streak, I believe now. So um this was not a fluke and uh yeah that's that. So Texas Tech. Good basketball tape. And we got the Ken Palm tweet, which was, we have no more undefeated teams. And mm. Baylor was really the team, the sorry Baylor. Baylor was, was undefeated. kind of the final they, nail. They were the, the last one, right? They were the last USC one. USC lost to Stanford. Yeah, before that. Uh, before that, which we'll get to in a little bit uh, later in the show. We're going to, we'll, we'll spend some time talking. But I, I thought it was a little poetic, you know, that that was the last team. That was our national champion. Yeah. It feels like they were the right team to get the final sorry from Ken. So now do we shift into, with no undefeated teams, do we shift into... There just aren't any great teams this year. That's what I I said. That, Twelve that teams. People, Twelve teams yeah. to win the title, <laughs> and and I want to narrow that down to eight. You know, you want to have a t or maybe a tight seven. Yeah, but I don't know. I think the field is open. Which we all we've ever wanted in college it, basketball is journalists is parody, right? That's yeah. what all the journalists want. Yes. We just want parody. Remember in twenty twenty when uh, the narrative all year was like, "There's no great teams," and it's like wide open, and and mm -hmm. oh my god, could Dayton win a national championship with Obi Toppin? And then like the tournament gets canceled, and now when everyone looks back on that, it's like Kansas was a hundred percent winning the best national, team, the best yeah. team by far, yeah, head and shoulders above. I mean, everybody. Dotson had it in his jacket, yeah. twenty twenty national champions. I love how, uh, but I, I guess that's where we're at right now is that there are no great teams, but at the same time, I think Auburn is a great team. I still think Arizona is an unbelievable basketball team, and I yeah. love, 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 capital L, capital O, capital V, capital E, love Arizona. We um, talked about on the last show what team in the Pac-12 is really kind of the king of the Pac-12, which as soon as we say it, they're, they're going to fall yeah, off. Yeah. So I, maybe I don't say it, but USC and UCLA falter in Arizona. Yeah, dude, They're the UCLA team. lost last night. Three top five teams lost. Almost, you if USC didn't hang on, they were they they were in a close one with Oregon State last mm. night too. Uh, if they don't hang on, they already lost. But they they would have had three top five teams lose at home if USC would have lost it. But we I, we had two. I have a theory about what UCLA had to do last night. I think it was Nike related. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I think that I think they phoned in this one. I think oh. Nike called this one. Ahead. I think that you know because Phil Knight. Probably has three of those. When they signed the Dude, Jordan deal, great call. He was thinking to himself, "Hey, you guys, as soon as I help you, I'm going to be hurting Oregon. So the way that I do this, this is, is I have three call. times during you know my living, the rest of my life, where if I need a win, I call it That's in. That's a great call. And I think he called it in last night because Oregon, call. Oregon is fall, <laughs> faltering. They are falling off, and he's like, "We need a big win, and we need a top five win to get they this program all together, turned yeah. around." And UCLA was like, no fans in the building. Yeah. We have some excuses that we can point to. Nike called it in. Uh, that, I, I love that theory. Mm. I in fact, I... So not I, a bad loss for UCLA. That's, yeah. All in all. I'm accepting that as fact. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> um, back, back to Texas Tech Baylor. So Texas Tech, as I said, this was not a fluke. This team is very, very good. I, I don't know... Uh, they they haven't been fully healthy. Uh, Terrence Shannon has the uh, the the back issue that like I don't know when he's supposed to be back and and not back. And but you watch this team whatever, but, against uh, Baylor and you're like, Shannon just seems like s supplemental, right? At that point, you're like they they kind of have a good they had a good squad, you know. Yeah. You could see that team without him being able to thrive. So at least it's not so dependent on him, which is nice too. Um. So, how do you feel about Baylor now? Where 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 do we land on Baylor? Are we worried about Baylor? Uh, is this good for when, when Gonzaga lost to Duke? We were like, this is this, this is, is great. Good for this is good for Gonzaga. Um, is this good for Baylor? Where, where are you worried about them losing at home like this? We're really up like fifteen or something. At yeah, one point. The, they, the number one ranked away. team is cursed right now. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets the number one ranking is going to lose. That's that's how it feels this year. Which I mean, obviously in college basketball we see that a lot. There's a lot of you know upsets that happen. That's part of the game, but. I do think that for Baylor's sake, it was fun being number one because it just got the people reminded of who's the king of the mountain, you know? Yeah. Who really is top dog. We're defending national champions. So it was fun for that moment. 
Maybe they get back there. I think we're still trying to figure out who the number one team is. As soon as Auburn gets number one, that's when we get, we're going to see them mm. get upset by whoever in the SEC. Um, but I, I don't think it's a bad thing for Baylor. And Baylor's better maybe this year as the last one seed or, you know, a, a you two seed you don't want to see. Who, yeah. what, what team out there would want the target on its back? Would welcome that? Would be like, I, I think we can Duke. handle that. They lost like immediately. They were number one. Last but they would. You're talking about who's going to outwardly say we want. Oh that. yeah, yeah. I mean, outwardly, but who's like internally like we can actually handle this. We think we could be fine. Uh, I don't. I don't know who it is. I don't know who it is because Auburn. I think they have the talent to do it, but they're gonna. You know, the spotlight's bright. Purdue. We have already seen the spotlight's bright. Yeah. Kansas think, maybe. Kansas might be an answer. But yeah. They're they're not. Ruby Martin's got to start. I think. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I mean, uh, that's another mystery we can talk about. It <laughs> the Big 12, by the way, this game in particular shows it. The Big 12 is you know, loaded. Maybe my favorite conference. In it's basketball. loaded. Yeah. It's crazy. It's fun to watch. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's very, very good. Uh, as is the SEC. Can we talk about Alabama and Auburn? Yeah. Because this this was, as I said at the top, I I, I wouldn't say it was necessarily the best game uh, that, that we've seen this season, but it was my favorite game that I've seen all season. Uh, just because the the rivalry, we, we we talked about it on Tuesday when we did the show leading into the game, um, that we, we we wish that the the Alabama and Auburn had a better basketball rivalry because both these programs are budding and, and turning into something. Yeah. And I I ripped on last time we we spent some time talking about Bama. I ripped on their atmosphere at that that arena they have because it was just like I I, I don't know if it was the fans the the arena I have no idea but like no the, students the Auburn arena it looks awesome on TV and it looks like it's loud as hell Alabama. Most of the time I watch Alabama, I don't get that that vibe through the television. I got that in this game. This mm -hmm. th this was just like absolutely rowdy, absolute madness. Uh, it felt like these guys were playing slam ball, like where every <laughs> single guy was trying to dunk on each other. But then like, th that's a great way to describe. Like, that's it. all it was. It was like yeah. everyone was trying to dunk on each other. It was physical <laughs> as hell. They're like checking each other in the air as they're trying. Uh, JD Davison had this sick dunk on. Uh, uh, who who was that on? That was, was that on Kessler? I think it was on Kessler. I think it was. Yeah. I think but but no shade to Kessler because he, I mean, um, Kessler impacts the game. I think he only had two points in this game, but he still impacts the game. Wendell Green was the star of the game. Well, Jabari, 19 points off the bench. Jabari Smith is the star of the game, stat-wise, and in and, and the sense of, like, he's the most talented guy on the floor. He's going to be the number one pick. I think he's going to be the number one Did you see one. Jimmy Dyke said that on the broadcast? He was like, it, he's he basically was like, Jabari Smith is the number one pick. Are we I, locking it in? I mean, that's what he said. He said it was locked. Dude, I think we're getting there, though, because... <laughs> Who, uh, who, well, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm. I agree with you. I think he should be the number one pick. But I think that the propaganda of Paulo Bancaro and the propaganda of Chet Holmgren. You haven't even seen once CAA gets their hands on these kids. That's true. They're shooting them to the moon, and they were already the ones. Like Jabari's still the outsider. He this, looks the part, though. This My is a good God. point. I, I I wouldn't say Jabari Smith is a lock to go number one. What I would say is if you, if you ask me who I would take number one, Jabari. I would say Jabari without hesitation. Same. Yeah, because he can. He's. He like him and Paolo feel similar, uh, but Jabari Smith's a much better defender. He, he can do everything Paolo Bencaro can do, except he can also defend at a very, very high level. And he's also kind of old school with the way that he seems to approach the game yeah. of basketball. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he has a chip on his shoulder a little bit, big um, motor. So here, here's why I I came away from this game obsessed with Auburn, and I say that as a guy who I I I wear my feelings on Bruce, about Bruce Pearl on my sleeve. I I. Do, do not want to live in a world where Bruce Pearl has the best team in the country, but I also call it like I see it, and Auburn is uh, playing out of their minds right now because we, we know Walker Kessler, we know Jabari Smith. Those two guys are are elite. Uh, Walker Kessler didn't even play that well against them. No. Uh, but um, they're, Auburn's defense, anchored by those two in, in the middle, blocking shots and and using their, their length and all that, uh, the, Auburn's going to win a ton of games just based on that. Uh, they're going to win a ton of games because Jabari Smith is unstoppable and, and is the Kevin Durant of college basketball. <laughs> yes, I think it's confirmed now. All of these things are true, but ultimately, I I have always felt that, uh, and probably because it's true that when when it it, it comes to nut cutting time, when, when you're in the NCAA tournament and like it's it's a, a tie game with two minutes left. Mm. What what ultimately it comes down to is guard play, and Jabari Smith is not a guard. He he can play on the perimeter, he can shoot, he can he can make plays off the bounce. He is not a guard. He's not a guy that you're going to have the ball in his hands, like direct waving guys off necessarily. Maybe I maybe we'll get there. He's not there right now. Yeah. And this game to me, Tate, with the the rivalry aspect of it, the the madness going on inside that arena, um, 
the fact that Auburn had a big lead, Bama comes back to tie it. Uh, this game became as as good as Jabari Smith was. Wendell Green was the difference. And what I mean by that was like as you're watching, you could tell that that Bama's guards of Shackelford and, and Quinterly and uh, uh, J.D. Davison, th- that's what makes Bama good is their guards. Mm-hmm. And this was a game where it, it did get to, to like the pressure cooker was turned up. There were there were guys were just like staring each other down and 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 trying to make plays. Um, the, the guards, I mean, to where uh, it, it just had this environment that like it it, it felt like to, to use the cliche, it felt like an NCAA tournament game because. They threw everything out the window in terms of like running shit and 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 trying to find the best matchups and all that. And at a certain point, something happens in these environments, whether it's it's a uh, the crowd or whether it's the tension of the moment, whatever, where guards just have a tendency when the ball is in their hands, they're like, "I'm gonna make a play." And I don't like that that yeah. that happens across all of college basketball. Where guards like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna take this into my own hands." And a lot of times it does not work. Mm-hmm. Indiana fans listening understand. That <laughs> they're like, God, it's not always the case. best case. Yeah. That is not always the best case. But the best case is like a Ty Lawson scenario. Yes. Which is just like, I need buckets. I'm going to go get an easy bucket, drive to the basket. And what I learned from this game is that Wendell Green is that guy. He can be that guy. Um, mm-hmm. Because as I said, Alabama's strength is their guard play. Like if you're, if there's a reason you want to talk yourself into Alabama being a great team. It's how talented their guards are. Wendell Green s- stared them all down. was like, I'm going to take over this game. And I don't know if it's like a conscious Three steals. I don't know if it's like a conscious thing where he looks up at the clock and he's like, "All right, there's eight minutes left. It's my time." Or if, like I said, it's just a subconscious thing where you're bringing the ball up, you feel the the moment, and you're like, "I'm going to take over." Whatever it is, Wendell Green can be that guy, and for that reason, that 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 would be the one question mark you would have about Auburn as you've watched them all year is like, can the guards at like an elite level in the SEC? Uh, compete and 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 make plays for this team and the answer is definitively yes that's what i learned from from the alabama game so, absolutely and that was a great test because alabama has three guys that i mean davison is was the number one point guard in the country so he thinks he's going to play at the nba level which is funny davison uh he's from alabama right he mm-hmm. was supposed he he's not supposed to be he was he had, the yeah the alabama he had auburn and alabama on his final list and i think bruce pearl thought he was going to get him he doesn't get Davison, and then I think they go out and get Wendell Green because Davison commits to Alabama. That's just the funny wrinkle about this game. And then Wendell Green. See is better that than that's why this game <clears throat> could be a real rivalry because those are how that's how rivalries work. It's always like that kind of kid, you know. If you look yeah. at Carolina right now, like Jeremy Roach, Duke takes Jeremy Roach. Caleb Love wanted to go to Duke. Duke takes Jeremy Roach over Caleb Love. Caleb Love goes to Carolina. And then Caleb Love, when he plays Duke, balls That's out because yeah, yeah. Exactly. in the same way with probably Will wanted to go to Carolina. Exactly. And then kills, the Carolina. kills Carolina. Yeah. He's like going at Brian Morrison and Adam Boone. It's like you win, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway, that that's uh, that, I believe in that's this rivalry. Why, uh, that's what I take away from this game. Yeah, also. as well. Me as well. That uh, that uh, the the Bama fans showed up and showed out. And, mm-hmm. uh, it was it was a great environment. I I not that they believe in moral victories, but it was a good game. And and Auburn might be the best team in the country. So if you're Alabama, you're saying we're okay. Hang like, a banner. We 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 played well against the best team in the country. <laughs> we let it slip through our fingers uh, against the best team in the country. The SEC, dude. It's it's how great is that that um, we've reached a point where Kentucky. Florida and Tennessee were not playing, and you were locked in on an SEC game. And Arkansas wasn't like I'm just trying to think of like the historically great uh, uh, college basketball. Also, get better games. soon, Muss. I right. saw that Muss bus get better yeah. soon. Um, that it, like Auburn Alabama game can be this awesome and have this much talent on the floor, and, and the SEC is in a good spot. Yeah, the one thing that I do appreciate about the SEC is that they invested in basketball. Yeah, you know what I mean. And they didn't have to because they run football, and usually basketball was second fiddle little brother they didn't really care about it but some of the bigger football programs alabama and auburn they they decided that they wanted more yeah and i think it's good for basketball now I, not to say that bruce pearl was always going to be good for basketball yeah, I know, I know. but they said they and wanted lsu more. will wait and like yeah, yeah. I but uh um no you're right like it's it's, it's great because tom well, crean had the number one pick that's true <laughs> people forget yeah, it's true um it's great in the sense that like having having the SEC be having another viable con- like you don't just dismiss the SEC like it's fun to like go into a season and and Kentucky has a good team and you still don't know if Kentucky's the best team that's that's yeah. rare it's rare for that to happen uh but I also have started to put the pieces together and forecast down the line that the whole reason they're investing in basketball is for world domination that this is like a, oh. this is part of building the walls around the SEC and saying we do sports out. we yeah, we are college we are college sports. sports yeah we own everything 
We we own baseball. We own football. We own gymnastics. We own gymnastics. We own softball. We own soccer. Now now we're going to own men's basketball. Watch this. You're right. Maybe we shouldn't be celebrating this. They own women's basketball too because they have Don. That's true. That's true. Oh my god. Yeah. You're right. Never mind. Don't (laughs) cheat. And Kim Mulkey at LSU now. I know. They they pried her away from Baylor. Dude, this is this is bad. Is Big Twelve is the Big Twelve in the Alliance? Uh, no, I don't think they are. We're gonna it's, need it's we're ACC, gonna need the Big Twelve. It's ACC, Pac twelve, and the uh, Alliance. I will say this: I will speak for the Alliance. We need the Big Twelve. I don't think there's an Alliance anyway, dude. What what your your commissioner today is saying? He doesn't want to expand the playoff. Who's a Big Ten guy? Jim Phillips goes Phillips. from Northwest. That's your guy. To, that's your guy. No, dude, that's your guy. <laughs> that's your guy. Says he doesn't want to expand, expand the playoff. Like, what the hell? Are we, where's, where's the alliance? The Pac-12 says we want nothing more than to expand the playoff. Pac-12 is like, please, please, we will be the 12th seed. We will, whatever it takes. <laughs> the yeah. It's like we will be the 12th man. <laughs> and then the ACC is like, we 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 know nothing of the Pac. We, who, Pac-12 never heard of them. We don't. We don't. The ACC them. is really holding on to the Clemson JB and chips. You know what I mean? I they're, they're they're clasping them, you know, as close as possible, and they're saying we already won. And this Florida way. State. Yeah, but that was well, Florida State was BCS, right? Was that BCS? That was. Was yeah, it the last? That was, last, that that was like the last, last BCS. BCS ones, yeah. That's when I knew that they had to change this. That's when they broke the system because they were like, we can't let this happen again. But maybe that's ACC why they, they want to contract because the ACC won. Uh, Miami won a BCS title. Yeah. Florida State won a BCS title. So maybe they're like, we need fewer teams. We need. <laughs> <laughs> We need to go back to the era where we were winning national titles. Uh, anyway, where were we? Uh, we, were, we were talking about Alabama and Auburn. Yeah. Auburn's awesome. Um, Bama, I, I still, I still have a little bit of faith in Bama. Bama, Bama is going to be a, a tough out, a tough out in March, but also like Bama is going to be impossible to pick. Like that's been the case all season. They're the most inconsistent team. They can beat anybody. They can lose to anybody. They're a make shot team. Yeah, maybe when we do our bracket, we just. Flip a coin. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's all. Or maybe we have our little Nerf goal. And we just we shoot a shot, and if we make it, Bama <laughs> yeah. wins. If we miss it, Bama loses. Perfect. Bama could Bama put Bama in the same category as what we were talking about with Memphis, where we, we could talk ourselves into Memphis going on the UCLA Final oh. Four run. That's I feel the same way about Bama. Bama has the talent to to make a Final Four. Yeah, where are the odds on both those teams being in the Final Four? That would be something interesting because... Is this it, a Final Four preview? Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying those teams both have the talent to go to a Final Four. Auburn... Auburn is a title team. They are, yes. And I, I'm waiting for Charles Barkley to someone to tell him that they are so that he's going to start talking about them a bunch on NBA on TV. No one's told him yet, you know? I don't I don't know who's in charge of that at Auburn, but someone needs to call, call Chuck <laughs> and say that this team is legit because... Or maybe the fact that he's not talking about him makes it even more real, that he knows... All the other times he's hyped up Auburn. He knows they're not that. He knows good. he's not. Th- they're not yeah. that good. He's just trying to like kind of pour a little fuel on. He loved Chuma. Moment. Yeah. And Chuma beat Carolina. Now he's like, oh my god, we actually might be the best team in the country. <laughs> so maybe, maybe there's that. I don't know. <sighs> uh, what what all, what other things is there to talk about? UCLA lost to, to Oregon. Or Oregon is a similar boat as uh, Alabama. They they've been worse. They, um, they I, I've I've called them a fraud many times over on this program, but uh, they they they're a guard oriented team that that you had expectations for coming into the season. Mm. They've been very inconsistent, to put it mildly. But <laughs> watching the UCLA game, you understand why you like it was that was literally just like our guards are better than yours. We're just going to give the ball to Jacob Young and Will Richardson, and they're going to make plays, and that's all we're going to do all night, and you're not going to stop us. And it's frustrating because you're like, why? Wh- how did BYU beat you by a thousand? But then also, it's I guess encouraging because hopefully, we get this Oregon moving forward. I don't know. I don't know what to make of Oregon. They're, it's very. If Oregon played Alabama, good luck to whoever set in the line on that game. Because mm. who the hell knows which one of these teams are showing up? Who? How good the guards are? Playing. All five of their starters scored in double figures for Oregon. So I mean, it was a <clears throat> it was a quality game from them. That's what I mean. I mean, it was like a. This is the Oregon team we thought that we would see this mm-hmm. year. We famously discussed them winning Maui and getting the Maui bump. I thought they were going to win Maui. I that thought, was a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, they did not win Maui. They did not <laughs> win Maui. But Hame Hakez is the one that I'm worried about. I know. They need Hame back. Hame is really the heart of the UCLA Bruins. You know, if I love Johnny. Johnny's the flash. You know, we love watching Johnny Juzing. But Hame Hakez is how that team gets going, and he was not good in this game. Hey, yeah, I, I guess... Uh, 
Well, I, I got. I have more thoughts. I want. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, spoil what we have coming. Oh, because we have the we have the frauds. The frauds so I don't want to. Oh, talk we have about the frauds. Yeah, don't it. don't get too lost in this. I don't. Uh, quickly, you want to talk about Duke before? That's a good lead into talking to Kenny Blakeney, who played at Duke. Uh, mm. well, let's let's talk about Duke Wake Forest real quick, and then we'll uh, throw it to the interview we did with the with Coach Blakeney. Um, John Shire fills in for Coach K. Uh, AJ Griffin gets his first start of uh, for for Duke. I like AJ Griffin by the way. Plays very well. Good player. Wake Forest. Yep. Um. Duke doesn't have a point guard. That's becoming increasingly clear, which I think we kind of knew. But Jeremy Roach officially gets the gets put on the bench, and uh, Keels was playing point a little bit. Like I don't, I don't know what the hell they're. Keels doing. is a middle linebacker. I, I, dude, I, I watch him out there, and I'm like, if this guy was from North Carolina, he would have played football. You know, he's from <laughs> New Jersey, so they made him play basketball. It's too cold. But he he like probes like a middle linebacker. You know what I mean? And he's got a smooth stroke, which like throws me off every single time he shoots it. Because like the dude is built like a guy that's just gonna like launch it like a catapult over his head. Yeah. Like he's gonna shoot but, like Julius Peppers, but yeah, then he shoots it and smooth. He's gonna go. I I know he's gonna declare for the draft because that's how it works. But like I I don't understand. Understand how this man's gonna like what position he plays at the next level. What he does, like he's he's a very 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 good basketball player that like has no position, has no. You're absolutely right. He's playing the wrong sport. He's playing the wrong sport, and I think someone's got to tell him eventually. But he could. I mean, how many? Jason guys, Garrett's gonna be showing up at Duke games trying to get this man to play. Uh, exactly. That's what I mean. There's a chance. There's a chance that he gets talked <laughs> into playing. I don't know if it's tight end. They might just be like, dude, I think you're strong safety. I think you're Jalen Ramsey. Uh, put him out there. But yeah, this game was fascinating because Coach K doesn't coach and it was not COVID related. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the last time that you and I spoke on the air, you brought up the witchcraft. Ooh. The back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that you you pointed it out. I didn't point it out. You pointed it out. And the next game he's out. And Can I you think, imagine the bottom ticker? It says Coach K out and the parentheses witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Coach K is, will miss this game. If Duke tweets out a release, I, Coach K will miss the game I due, to, he, due to complications from witchcraft. <laughs> I think he was I think he was summoning. And I think when you summon at that age, it takes a few days to get back on your feet. You know what I mean? And John Shire takes over. I think it also lets Coach K be the good guy for Jeremy Roach. You know what I mean? Because Shire comes in and he's like, I'm the head coach. This is how I operate. Roach, you're big. Here's, AJ Griffin, you're starting. Here's my galaxy brain uh, thought on Duke right now. Is John Shire takes over. John Shire, senior year, 2010. Duke wins the national title when, uh, you might remember, you certainly remember. <laughs> yeah, oh, I uh, remember. Duke, <laughs> Duke didn't really have a point guard that year either because Nolan Smith was running point. He's not a point guard. He's a shooting guard. He's he, it, was, it was a mess of a situation. John Shire ends up taking well, you over. Well, you duties. remember why they didn't have a point guard. What's that? Because Greg Paulus was supposed to be the point guard on this oh, team. Oh, that's right. And he went to Syracuse? And, and, and Coach, yeah. And to play football? To play Is that right? Football. Coach K ran him out of town because Coach K was like, I'm going to start Nolan Smith over you. And Greg Paulus was like, I'm a senior. I'm going to be the, I'm supposed to be the best. Is that right? He had an extra year left? No, I mean, he was the, he was a senior year before. But, oh, but yeah. I'm just saying. You know, in the in my timeline, Nolan Smith was never going to be able to be the point guard because he was right. I guess he was I done you. wrong. I got you know you. to to what do they call him? GP. GP. Shout yeah. out GP. Head coach of Niagara, right? Yeah. Still. Yeah, I think. <laughs> let's do a hot seat update. <laughs> <laughs> whatever happened to let, let's do a whatever happened to and we start naming guys who are like still Division One head basketball coaches. <laughs> whatever happened to Speedy Claxton anyway? <laughs> yeah, he's at Hofstra. Anybody ever heard from that guy? And he's like. I'm the head coach. <laughs> Whatever happened to Patrick Ewing? Um, so uh, uh, John Shire, as I said, in 2010, the the Duke issue was they didn't have a the, the issue, quote unquote, was they didn't have a point guard. What are we going to do about point guard? John Shire steps up, says, "I'll run point." I'm not really a point guard. I'm I'm I don't even know what I am, but I'm a leader. That's what I I'm am. a leader. Yeah. So I'll run point. Uh, is John Shire using that template from 2010? The last time Duke won a uh, regular season Nash, or regular season ACC championship as well, by the way, mm -hmm. and he's like, we got to apply that same magic magic to this team. Maybe he's going to talk Wendell Moore into running point. 
I don't I don't love there's there's no answer for dude. Like Wendell no, Moore is probably the best option for them to run. Keels Keels run it like that's a waste of talent. <laughs> that's not the answer. Not the that's answer. not the answer. I like Keels a lot, but he is not the answer to run point guard. Wendell Moore might be the answer. AJ Griffin is not the answer as well. That dude's just gonna like he he's aggressive as hell. He's just gonna He's like a Pat Beverly type player, yes. you know what I mean? Where you're you're just like we give him the ball, it might be a little bit erratic. You yes. know what I mean? It might be chaos. But Wendell Moore would be the one that Coach K and John Shire could trust. And I think you make a great point because John Shire you only can pull from your own experiences you know what I mean yeah and those are his experiences obviously so he just wants to run it back and this team could go on a run like that 2010 Duke team for sure but that 2010 Duke team kind of crept up on everybody mm. you know and that was one of the worst tournaments as we all know ever 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 like if you go horrible back to that tournament. Tournament, the horrible tournament not enough people talk about how. Uh, so we I, hope that doesn't happen this year. Yeah, we we Ohio State was set to win the national title that year, but then uh, I got food poisoning the I I I uh, the morning of the game against Tennessee in the Sweet 16, and I couldn't go to the game, and then we lost, and um, we we would have won the national title otherwise. <laughs> So that's that tournament. Just yeah. just so we know what we're dealing with. And, and for that, people at home that are that, like, that started the Mickey Mouse. What do you mean, Mark? <laughs> just think about the fact that I mean, you need leaders on the bench, dude. I point to that game as proof that like every everyone make everyone wants to make fun of me and say you did nothing because like, I was I graduated as the winningest player <laughs> in Ohio State history, and everyone's like you played. <laughs> You scored nine points. You, you, you should, obviously didn't have that plaque. You obviously didn't make that much of a difference. And I say, well, uh, we won all these games, and then the one game I don't go to, we lose. So yeah. you you make and sense. people forget. I mean, Greg Oden, Mike Conley, and I've heard them both say on the record they were going to go to the ACC to play basketball, at the best conference. And Mark Titus Facts. said we're going to Ohio State. Facts. And you brought them there. Facts. Thank you, Tate. <laughs> what is it considered food poisoning if you're just eating <laughs> Chipotle, <laughs> Chipotle burritos till you're sick? <laughs> I, I, I was just hammered Chipotle and yeah. Costco. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's eating three burritos. He ate way too many. <laughs> okay, go to the ate game. so much food. Okay, go to yeah, the game. <laughs> yeah. Food poisoning. Dude. I poisoned myself with too many burritos. You're not wrong. You're not <laughs> wrong, dude. We go on those road trips. Mark Titus is out due to witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I think Kansas was supposed to win the national title that year as well. That was 2010. The, yeah. That was the Farouk Manesh shot. I think uh, so. Yeah, Ali. Yeah. yeah. Kansas was the best team all year. And then, has anyone ever been out by that, though, as the reason? Like Chipotle? Was, it just has well, burritos? Just, yeah, that would be burritos. great. Though. Yeah. Dude, I, I came close. I, I remember one game at Iowa. I had... <laughs> one game at Iowa I was about to shit my pants on the one bench. game at Iowa sounds like a series <laughs> <laughs> I was about to shit my pants on the bench and uh I the, the way their the way that their uh gym was set up I don't know if they've renovated or whatever but back then you come out of one tunnel and then when you come out of the tunnel Iowa's bench is right there and then you keep going and the visitor's bench so basically I'm on the end of the visitor's bench <laughs> and the tunnel to go shit is down on you the other to, side you of the gym to run by everybody yes so, yeah. so like if wow. I had to go during the game it looked like I was going to check in <laughs> <laughs> I would stand up and like walk past the scores table <laughs> so I'm sitting there holding it and then at one point during a timeout I, I think I dipped and, and went and then I almost missed the team flight because I had to shit again after the, after the game it was crazy it, did you have to go so bad like you were hot so you're taking your jacket yeah. off like your warm up and everything it really looks like you're going in the game as you're running by the table yeah. dude I if, if for come the, back sweating they're like what did you do I wrote about uh, having diarrhea in my book so much because uh, I would go <laughs> What is the show? Because? Hoop is funny. I, it is funny. It's always funny. It's always I don't funny. Think so. We would we would go on the road, dude, and we would go to these I steakhouses know. and get a. Uh, we would get like the whatever. You, it was like all you could eat at these steakhouses, mm. and I would I, th I think I've talked about this on the show before. I would rationalize it as like I'm a Division One athlete. I can eat whatever I want because I'm like Michael Phelps burning. You know, yeah, you yeah. hear the stories of Michael Phelps eating seven thousand calories. Yeah, but he burns it off because he's a great athlete. So I was like, I'm gonna eat whatever I want because I I'm gonna burn I'm an, this off. I'm an athlete. I'll burn yeah. it off. But then I also wouldn't ever practice because I wasn't a real player. So I got caught in this cycle of just like eating like absolute garbage, never actually practicing. And then like nights before games. Anyway, nights before games, I'd be housing like ice cream and and fat New York strips with mashed potatoes. Because they're trying to get everybody potatoes. else the calories that they need. Yes. To burn. And I'm getting the calories. And then the next morning I'd wake up and about shit my pants and it's game day. And that's how I got put in those situations all the time. So that's what I'm going to... So all you youngsters, all you high school kids listening, like trying to under, don't 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 make the same mistakes I did. Be better. How about this for a tactic? You know how sometimes like the uh, the home team will have like the visitors' locker room like hotter or something like yeah. the temperature oh, up. Oh yeah, That's you blow Duke up does. the bathroom before they get there. <laughs> yeah. 
in the visitor bathroom. That's a great call. Yeah. That's a great And idea. they come and they're like, oh my God. Clog, <laughs> clog the toilets. Yeah. There you go. Clog the yeah, toilets of the middle, visitor bathroom. That's locker. middle school. Upper middle. deckers yeah. just leaving. Yep. That's some, that's some like. That's devious. It's pretty good. Somebody should do that. Anybody Which listening? Which coach is. Blow up the bathroom before the visitor team. <laughs> Mark <comes>. Godfrey. <laughs> Which coach? He walks by like Cousin Eddie. Day. Shitter was full. <laughs> All right, let's talk to uh, Kenny Blakeney. I uh, so full disclosure, I, I went solo on this. Are one. you worried about Coach K? Final thing before we throw. Are you, are you worried about Coach K? Are you worried Just in general? Are you? Yeah, are you. I'm worried? always worried about Coach K. Okay. My 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 beloved Coach K. I'm always worried about him. Always. Worried. I'm worried that John Shire is trying to kindle Roy the situation, or Shiv Roy the situation. <laughs> Whichever Roy you want to pick, she. I think he's trying to get ahead. Of, of himself and make himself the head coach. And I think Coach K, like in Family Feud, like I'm throwing up the X, stop. No, or, or do you think it's the opposite, that coach, this was the plan all along and Coach K is going, to, like, have we seen the last of Coach K? You know what I was thinking? The best thing that Coach K could do, and this would be very Vic Boobus of him, is to <laughs> leave this year. You would? Leave this year, start his own university. Uh-oh. Start his own conference. His own, his, his own, <laughs> it's his own. Like it's Don they're independent. No, they're in, they're independent, and they play. They just they're <laughs> basketball, just academy. K's academy, the K academy, K academy. A, yeah, bigger than bigger than Duke. A K A D. Bigger than Duke. Like bigger it. than Duke. Uh, right. Speaking can, of yeah, speaking of Duke, let's talk to uh, Kenny Blakeney, head coach Howard University. Uh, full disclosure, I I went solo on this. Do you want to explain to the people why you didn't do this interview? Well, I came to the lot. Uh, I mean, it's a long story. I came to a lot to, to take a test. I took a test. And then Jim, our producer, calls me and says, I have to go take another rapid <laughs> test. I go to a lot. I'm basically like in the island of misfit toys. There's no one around. I have no service. I'm taking this test. I thought originally we were going to talk to Coach Howard, which, you know, I was like oh, really excited. Juwan Howard. Juwan Howard. You, go, you thought Howard. the interview was for Juwan Howard. Yeah. yeah. And then and then turns out, no, Howard Coach, which is a former Dukey. So at that point, I was willing to wait for my rapid. <laughs> I, I was like, I'll wait the ten minutes. Uh, all of that, all of that is to say that uh, I I did the interview. <laughs> yeah, so, you uh, did a great job. My, I haven't heard it, but I think it's gonna be great. My uh, my discussion with uh, Kenny Blake. All right, joining me now is Kenny Blakeney, the head coach of the Howard Bison. You can watch his basketball team take on Notre Dame Monday, January seventeenth, MLK Day. On Fox at 2.30 Eastern, uh, Purdue, Illinois play the lead-in. Great day of basketball. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we're, we're excited to have Coach Blakeney joining us. And Coach, got to knock on wood out of the gate. First question, this game was supposed to be played last year. It got canceled because of COVID. Uh, I, I, I feel like I've become very superstitious because anytime I start looking forward to something, it gets canceled inevitably. So... Give me some peace of mind. Tell me, like, right now, where the where you guys are at with with the COVID situation. It, are we? Are we're, we're hoping this game gets played, right? Well, I don't think it's going to be the COVID situation. It can be the three to five inches of snow that we're expecting. <laughs> 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 it might be that. It might. Notre Dame has problems landing the plane in uh, in DC. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. I, I hope their trip from Virginia Tech from Blacksburg takes six hours to get here. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Um, in your own words, so so we've we've uh, we we talked to Gus Johnson. We had him on the uh, the program last year in anticipation for the game, and and he laid out uh, why why this game is so important to him. And uh, he's a Howard alum, obviously. Uh, in your own words, why why is this game something that that you're looking forward to so much and 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 means so much to your program? Well, I think one, it's Martin Luther King Day, and uh, for the past several years, we've really had uh, a great event every Martin Luther King Day where we host a, you know, a competitor and it's a, it's a really big deal. We've had Harvard, we've had Yale, uh, this year it's Notre Dame and those kind of brands really attract, uh, you know, the who's who of DC. Um, you know, we've had Supreme Court justices, we've had politicians, we've had lawyers, we've had, so to have Notre Dame come into Burr Gymnasium on the campus of Howard University, I, I think it's, First and foremost, just want to thank Coach Mike Bray, uh, who's been a mentor for me since I've been, you know, 12, 13 years old. Uh, we both come from the same family tree of DeMatha and Duke. And, you know, one of the things Coach Morgan Wooten talked about is that if you're a coach, you're an educator. And I think Coach Bray really gets that more so than, than you know, he's bringing his team in here to an HBCU for an educational experience, but also a, a chance to play, you know, I think a, our team that's playing pretty well right now. So it's a great day to support 
I think HBCUs, it's a great day to really recognize Dr. King and all his accomplishments and things that he's done for our, our world. Uh, with that in mind, you, you spoke to like the, the educational part of all of this. I'm, I'm curious, Coach, uh, someone in your position at a school like Howard that has the gravitas of Howard and, and is so important for so many reasons, um, I, I think the average college basketball fan, and you can stop, you can you can feel free to disagree, but I think they would they would say that winning a national championship at Howard is maybe unrealistic uh, for for this season, for right now. Um, and if that is in, indeed the case, what would you say as the coach at Howard? What are your goals going into a season where, like, say, like a Duke or UCLA is saying we're trying to win a national championship? What are you uh, on and off the court, both going into every season, saying to yourself, like, it'll be a successful season if this happens? Well, I think with this year for us, you know, not having a season last year with COVID, this is an important year for us to kind of get back on, you know, good grounds of, of being a good basketball program. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to take steps. This is year three for us, but we only played five games last year. So I only look at this as sort of year two, even though it's year three of my contract. Um, but, you know, for us, like our first year, we won four games. Last year, we won one. This year at, you know, 12 games going into the Notre Dame game, we're six and six. And, you know, it's trying to take progress and move the needle each and every year. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, you know, we have young men that do incredible things after they graduate from Howard. And that, first and foremost, is something that I'm really proud of. Our young men have internships during the summer uh, all over D.C. and all over the country. If it's, you know, doing things on Capitol Hill or doing things on Wall Street, you know, those things are very important for us. But it's also a chance for us with an opportunity like this game on Fox and with Notre Dame to be able to tell our story as a university that, you know, some people may not know or some people may not have a, uh, a good feel for who Howard University is. And we have so many leaders and we have so many people that have done significant things out here in our in our world that, you know, this this opportunity provides us a, a great, I think, you know, chance to really tell that story uh, of Howard University, but through an athletic lens. Well, I mean, for, for all the listeners, if you want to get an idea on Howard, just go to like Wikipedia and look up the alumni of Howard University and your jaw will drop just going through that list of uh, all the people that have that have been through school there. Uh, with, with that in mind, uh, that, that is one of the things. Being a modern college basketball coach, you got to schmooze the alums. You got to uh, you, you got to you got to figure out a way to play that game. Uh, maybe the political game, which might might take on a certain kind of different connotation uh, when you're based in D.C. and so many of your alums are in politics. Um, how, how was that? How was that part of the job when you're at a school like Howard where like, you know, at a lot of places, the, the, the top alum is a guy that owns a car dealership down the road or whatever. At your place is their vice presidents and, and, and people like that. Well, how, how was that part of the job for you? Well, it's, it's been unique and different, you know, for the last two years we've been in COVID protocol. So our campus has basically been kind of shut down. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, last year having McCore Maker, the first five star athlete to ever attend an HBCU um, with the traction that we gained there. I thought that would have been a great opportunity to really connect our alums with our program. And this year, you know, we have our ebbs and flows with COVID. Uh, right now, we are allowing fans into our games. So hopefully some of those famous alums that you're talking about, and maybe <laughs> one that's about a mile and a half down the road in the vice president's office can show up. There you go. Well, listen, the one big time alum that's certainly a huge deal around these parts, Gus Johnson will be there on the call. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited for that. Gus, last year we talked to him and he, he was, he started tearing up talking about his time at Howard and uh, just uh, the, 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 how he got his start and all that. It got me emotional. I was so ready for the game. That's why I, I God, I, I hope we don't jinx it coach, but uh, I want to talk to you about, about you personally as a player. Cause uh I, I love having coaches on here and talking about their teams, but let's be honest, what you really want to talk about is how much you could hoop when you were growing up. Um, <laughs> you, you, you touched on it. You played at DeMatha. You grew up in the D.C. area, played at, played at DeMatha, uh, went on to Duke, won back-to-back won -back national titles, and, and you, were, you were on those teams in 91, 92. Uh, with that in mind, I got to ask you, what was it like playing for the GOAT? Uh, Morgan Wooten, of course, is who I'm talking about. <laughs> it, was, it was unreal. Uh, you know, Coach Wooten is like you said, the GOAT. And uh, he was such a, you know, he's a teacher, right? So Coach Wooten taught history at DeMatha for maybe 40-something years and uh, also was the basketball coach. So in mm -hmm. the way that he, 
conducted his practices. It was more of an educational life experience. There was a quote every day. There would be poetry. There would be life lessons that were taught through basketball. And, and for me, I think it was the it was it gave me an opportunity to really get prepared for my next move. And that's going on to Duke University. But, you know, Coach Wooten was kind of like your grandfather, uh, yeah. but your very competitive grandfather that yeah. was so articulate that could use sarcasm to make you feel like you were a little kid uh, and didn't have to raise his voice or, or, or swear. And, uh, you know, he ultimately when he finished, he was the winningest high school coach in the history of high school basketball. And one of a handful of high school coaches that is in the Naismith Hall of Fame. So what a lucky opportunity I had to have a chance to play for him. It really was a, a part of my life that I will always cherish and relish. That's awesome. Uh, Coach, Coach Bray was on staff at Duke, too, when you were there, right? Like, that's the uh, obviously I knew the Duke connection, but you actually played for him, right? He was an assistant at Duke when you were there. Yeah, Coach Bray was an assistant at Duke when I was there, but Coach Bray was a history teacher when I was a freshman at DeMath as well. Oh, oh that's, right. that's right. That's yeah, right. He's a he's DeMath a, guy. Oh, my God. Look at that. Yeah, he's a DeMath guy as well. So it, it's, uh, you know, we, we, DeMath guys, are, we talk about it. It's one DeMath. And, uh, you know, that brotherhood is just as strong as some of these other brotherhoods that are around the country. And, you know, like – we, we have a, uh, a bond and a connection, myself and Coach Bray, with our Duke ties and our, our Duke ties that, you know, is, he's, like a, he's like a father for me, man. He's been there every step of the way of my journey. Well, I got to put you on the spot then, Coach, because uh, you, you have to declare on the show right, right here, right now, which coaching tree you belong to. Are you in the Coach K coaching tree, the Morgan Wooten coaching tree, the Mike Bray coaching tree? Who, uh, as you progress in your career and start racking up Ws, who, who, whose tree are you a part of, would you say? That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're all family, and I think we're all under the same coaching tree, to be honest. It's, uh, you know, Coach K is my guy. And uh, to have a chance to play for him at Duke, and he'd be a mentor for me and somebody that has been there for the last 30 years of my life. Uh, I am so grateful for the opportunity to, uh, to wear Duke Blue Devil jersey and and being an alum of duke and uh all of this is possible because of those relationships those mm -hmm. relationships with coach root and those relationships with coach k with mike bray my my one of my mentors coach tommy amaker at harvard I, I just i i'm a little bit like forrest gump man i've just been in the right place at the right time uh is there w w with with coach k retiring this year um i i gotta be careful how i ask this because i i don't want to put you in a bad spot but is there is there a coach k story that that you go to when you want to when when you get put on the spot and people ask you uh what what coach k is like maybe behind that we all know who he is like uh in front of the cameras we've seen this man for 40 years now but uh behind the scenes as a man who played for him is there is there a story that you recall at duke that's like this is this is a glimpse into who coach k is from your time there well I can give you one that's a little bit more recent than my time at Duke. Um, you know, during COVID, uh, my wife and I were living in two different states and cities. My, my wife works in New York City and I, I was obviously down in Washington, D.C. And our, 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 our season had just ended. And um, I was really concerned at the time. COVID had just kind of started and everybody was canceling their, their tournaments and everything like that. So I drove up to New York to be with my family. Uh, spent a month there and then we were like, you know, our one bedroom apartment in New York City doesn't work for us. Like, let's figure out a place to go. So we went down to Norfolk, Virginia and uh, rented a house down there. It was a little bit more space. We could run around. My four year old daughter uh, could go kick the soccer ball or go on the beach and do things like that. So one Saturday morning, Coach K uh, calls my phone and I'm sitting at breakfast and I'm like looking at my wife like I got to answer this call. And, you know, with the conversation, he wanted to talk for about 30 or 45 minutes about how much he loved Howard University and what a great opportunity he thought it was. He he kind of talked to, a you know, equated it a little bit like how he first got to Duke, where Duke had this brand, but they really didn't have a basketball brand mm. and how he kind of built that brand and, you know, was kind of giving me some insight to maybe some of the things that I can do at Howard. Uh, I tell everybody this, if Coach K wasn't the best basketball coach, you know, in college basketball, one of the best, best basketball coaches in history, he could be an incredible guy in the marketing world. He is a brand mm -hmm. guy and really understands 
uh, how to brand things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was very, you know, touched by that call and it really meant a lot. And uh, to hear his, his uh, appreciation for Howard and the alums and all of the great things that people have done at Howard, uh, it was really neat to hear. That's uh, I I think a lot of our listeners are they they're disgusted by hearing that they don't want to love Coach K they don't they don't want to hear anything nice about Coach K I think they're gonna be upset that you said that Coach I think they were hoping you answer that like he choked me out in practice or something I think that's what we were <laughs> well, we don't want you to humanize him please Coach um what what uh I was I was gonna ask you too I I wrote down uh Christian Leitner stories is is uh you, you were you were I believe a freshman on the on Christian Leitner's final team he's he's another polarizing guy as we talk about the history of college basketball um is is uh what w- is the reputation that Christian Leitner built for himself as a guy who played for him and and was a freshman as he was the uh running college basketball um is the reputation fair would you say or uh, did, did, it, did it spiral out of control the way people think about Christian Leitner now? Well, I'll tell you this. I had a chance to play two seasons with Late, and we have been very close friends ever since. So since uh, 19, probably 90, when I took my official visit to Duke, Christian Leitner and Brian Davis were my host. Uh, I knew Brian Davis from Washington, D.C. We both played on the same AAU team growing up. And uh, a great story about Christian, when we – First got to Duke, our freshman class of Grant Hill, Antonio Lang, Marty Clark, Christian Ass, and myself. Um, we had a ping pong table in our dorm. And I grew up in the DC rec centers playing ping pong all the time. And, you know, Christian came over and Christian grew up playing tennis mm-hmm. uh, along with other things. So we're playing ping pong. And I, you know, the first time or so, first day or so, I kind of give him the business a little bit. Christian didn't play me for like the next month <laughs> and he would, go to a, he would go to a little ping pong hall and practice every day <laughs> until he felt like he could beat me. And then he would come over and we would play, but late's an awesome dude. He is the ultimate competitor. Um, most of the things that you guys know about him are true. <laughs> <laughs> good. But, good. Uh, I, I, I do love who he is and would not want him to change one bit. That makes him late. Perfect. That that's more like it. That's what we wanted to know. We wanted to know that the Christian Leitner that we that we he, he is who we think he is. Uh all right, l- let's uh let's let's wrap it up with this. Uh tell the people that maybe haven't been following Howard closely. I mean, you've touched on it a little bit, but uh uh people are going to tune in. Maybe for for a lot of the country this might be the first time uh watching certainly this Howard basketball team, if not any Howard basketball team on, on Monday. So, uh what, what can people expect uh, as, as they're getting, give us a little primer going into the game on Monday, what your team, what, what you're trying to do out there, the kind of, kind of style of play, uh, what, what to look forward to in that regard. Yeah. Well, just a little bit of background. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to take the Howard job is because it's Howard. And in saying that we do have a great academic history and tradition and culture on that side of the campus, but on the basketball side, we've only had two winning seasons since 1992. Mm. Uh, Right now, I think we're on pace to have a successful plus 500 season. So I'm really excited about that. Knock on wood. Um, You're going to, we're going to play a style that we attack and it doesn't matter who it is. Um, So we're going to come after Notre Dame. We're going to pick them up full court and we play a very fast pace of basketball. Um, after our last game, we were playing the 36th fastest pace in the country. Mm. We have the second leading three point shooter, uh, as in terms of field goal percentage in the country, we are one of the top, probably 50 most efficient offensive teams in the country. Um, we play a style that is really fun to watch and fun to play. So I'm excited for the chance to compete against Notre Dame. Uh, you know, I've been watching them a lot over the years. Uh, I'm probably you know, as big as a Notre Dame fan as I am as any college team in the country, just because of my love and admiration of Mike Bray. Um, So I watched him a lot and, you know, he has them playing really well right now. They've kind of slowed it down on the offensive end a little bit with their pace of play, Um, but they're shooting the ball as confident as any team in the country. So it's going to be, you know, they say style make fights. Um, This is going to be one of those matches where styles make fights. We're going to attack. We're not going to back down. Um, he knows my personality and <laughs> who I am as a guy. So he, he knows if I'm, uh, if I'm saying we're going to attack him, we're going to meet him in their locker room and walk out on the court with them. And 
you know, we'll fight it out for 40 minutes. And when it's not settled, man, it'll be where it is. So we're excited to have this opportunity to play them, especially at Howard University. Well, shoot, Notre Dame's playing pretty well right now. I think they're they're riding high in South Bend. Uh, you, you pull off the upset, Coach. Mike Bray might not be too happy with you. Coach Bray uh, might. I think you might stop, stop answering your call. You might get the Christian Leitner treatment. He just ignores you for, <laughs> for a period of time because you, you beat him. Uh, listen, we, we love Coach Bray on the show. We've had him on. He's, he's a great interview, as, as you know. Um, but he's not sitting in front of me right now. You are. And for, and for that reason, I, I hope you guys do it. I, I will be rooting for you guys on Monday. Uh, Monday, January 17th, MLK Day on Fox 230. Best of luck, Coach. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. All right. Thank you to Kenny Blakeney for a uh, uh, that was great uh, fun interview. <laughs> that, was great. <laughs> that, was, that was so good. Did you like the part where he he called uh, uh, North Carolina fans? Uh, I think he said, "What do you say, Walmart?" Was that the term he used? No. Or uh, Jim Walmart? No. We had to or? censor all of that. <laughs> yeah. you know, no one's gonna ever hear that, yeah, especially no that other yeah. Coach K story. He said that I can't have to believe burn those tapes. No one will ever hear it. Ever. I can't believe he claims the '91 championship. <laughs> No, hang on a second. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Thank you, Coach. Uh, he, he was awesome. He was he was he was fun to talk to. He's uh, uh, I I am rooting for Howard, by the way. Oh, of course. I, you weren't here for the uh, you weren't here for that part, but uh, we do love Mike Bray on the show. We we uh, you of know, course. But I don't know. I we I, I'm, I'm going to be cheering for Howard on Monday. I would love if Howard became like a a perennial. Like if Georgetown is going to waver, Ooh, I like Howard that. jumps into that spot. Howard's the new Georgetown. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, let's, Good let's call. start yeah, let's uh, start pumping that. One thing I didn't mention to him during the interview, but I wanted to to make note of, is that uh, Kenny Blakeney, in 1992, national title game against Michigan, mm. against Jawan Howard. Oof. How about that? Full yeah. circle. Coach Howard. Is that is that where you got the idea to it coach all, Howard? <laughs> it all comes back. Uh, he put up a trillion in the 92 oh. title game. Kenny Blakeney did. So, uh, that's cool. You had a, a, a trillion in a national title. That's a, that's a rarity, Tate. So there you have it. Uh, all right. Did let's... he call it a snell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, damn it. Uh, let's, do, let's do some frauds. Fraud power rankings. Yes. Uh, it is Fraud Friday. Let's, let's dive into it. At number five this week, we have the Xavier Musketeers. Oh. Who lost in a must-win versus Villanova. This was, this uh, was a good game, by the way. They, they it, fought back. It was a good game, but Xavier had already lost to Villanova this season. Xavier was a yeah. team that I had circled coming into to, uh, the season as as the, the favorite to dethrone Villanova. Mm. That, that was my pick. There, there's a lot of picks out there. UConn uh, was was uh, a, a hot pick. Seton Hall. Who else? Is Seton good? Hall was my hot pick. Who else is good in the Big East that you'd like? Um, I mean, UConn was in you there. You said UConn. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Creighton can shake some things up. Yeah. Providence has has a lot of quad one wins. They're good, but they lost to Virginia. Yeah, that's the um, problem. There, there, you know, there, there's a lot. There's a lot of teams to pick from. My pick was Xavier. I was like, Xavier, mine was Seton Hall. Hall in. I think Xavier could can dethrone Villanova. I think they're the team to do it. They they are definitely not the team. Tate. They have mm. now been swept by Villanova for like the hundredth time in a row. Uh, this is gonna blow your mind because Xavier has had a lot of great basketball teams in the last few years. They uh they they have won the Big East before. The, the new iteration of the Big East. They have um, they have gotten a one seed in the NCAA tournament. Chris mm-hmm. Mack used his success as Xavier to take the Louisville job. All of that is to say, despite this run of Xavier basketball that has undoubtedly been successful, so successful, they are two and sixteen all time, or in, uh, not all time in the in the new iteration of the Big East. Two and sixteen, Tate against Villanova. Two and sixteen. How do you let this happen? It's fraudulent. Mm. This team is supposed to like. It's it's very obviously a mental block. Um, and it's, I, I, I don't like it. And this is, this is a Xavier team that beats Ohio state in the Gavit games. Uh, they hang the banner up in the Centos center that says yeah. we beat Ohio state. Yeah. Uh, Paul Scruggs had a dunk one time and, and I guess that's cool. Um, and they talked themselves into like, we are a legitimate team. You cannot be a legitimate team. If one team in your conference literally owns you, they just, they, they will beat you no matter where you play, no matter what the circumstances are. It's fraudulent. I don't like it. Number five, Xavier. I like it. And Villanova, by the way. We we said it at the start of the year. It's Villanova, and then who's for second place and and the race. That's why I'm years. so mad because like this Villanova, five and one in the conference. I don't I don't really like this Villanova team that much. Like they're they're I I don't hate them. They're they're not a bad basketball team, but um, Gillespie's figuring it out. Watching Gillespie and Justin Moore just back dudes down like they're Gary Payton is driving me up a wall. And like mm-hmm. it's it's successful, and it, that that's the worst part. Like Jalen Brunson introduced this to to Jay Wright um, when when Jalen Brunson started posting up. And uh, when he got to Villanova, he was like, I'm a point guard, but I can post up. How cool is that, coach? 
And he's like, that's awesome, Jalen. Now I'm going to make every one of my guards do this. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be our offense. Instead of like driving and kicking and moving the ball around, we're going to have Justin Moore just throw his ass into guys as he takes 12 dribbles into the post. And then if he gets doubled, he kicks it out to a three-point shooter. And it's working. So like, I guess, yeah, congrats. But aesthetically for me, I don't like it. Eric Dixon is the difference for that team. If they actually can have Eric Dixon continue to just get those like offensive rebounds, extra extra possessions, play inside, you know, yeah. just get garbage buckets. That's what they need. They needed a big. And I thought Slater was gonna have to slide and be the four or five and be that guy. But I think they can do it with Dixon. So that's the only reason I have a little bit, you know, more faith in Villanova. They weren't in my original top twelve that I said. I said I left them out. But might be thirteen. There's thirteen. <laughs> I, might, I might be like Dickie V. Just keep adding numbers. I think Villanova is a uh, throw up the X. By the way, I I, I I think they're good enough to to I don't know Sweet Sixteen. They're they're they're. I'm not saying they're a bad basketball team. I'm saying I don't really love them, and I yeah. wanted Xavier to punish them. I wanted Xavier to be like, you had your turn. It's now our it's turn our now. turn. Yeah. We're gonna run the Big East, and instead, the opposite is happening. And they just got down early, man. And then they it's were. A, just it's got to be a mental chasing. Game. The entire game, yeah. It's got to be. Like, Villanova was 4 for 20 from the three-point line. How do you lose at home when a team goes 4 for 20 from the three-point line? And you got up late in this game. You know, they made the comeback. They got up, and then Villanova still was, you know, able to figure it out. So, uh, frauds. At number four on the fraud power rankings is uh, something that people may be familiar with, maybe have, have heard of a time or two. It is COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely a fraud. Uh, and here's why beyond like I, there's, there's countless reasons why COVID is. Fraud, but, uh, <laughs> I like number four too. On the, on the <laughs> number four. Uh, this week, the reason it's, it's fraudulent in my eyes is that it, it is completely ruined Pac-12 basketball. It is, it is sunk Pac-12 basketball as a guy who, who loves doing the Pac-12 update and is, is proud to, uh, throw the Pac-12 propaganda out there, Tate. Um, COVID, the, the Omicron is putting me in a tough spot because, uh, I'm going to give you a breakdown of the last week of, of COVID bull going on with, with the Pac-12. No fans for UCLA-Oregon game. Yeah. Uh, so UCLA, you're going into the week. You have three top six teams. That's what that's That was the, the line of demarcation that Arizona was number six. Uh, USC was five. Yeah. UCLA was three. So we have, yeah. we have three of the top six in the Pac-12 uh, going into the week. But then UCLA has no fans for the game against Oregon. USC has no fans for the game against Stanford. Now, I, I'm trying to figure out a way. I, I need some more time to spin, spin zone this because USC was on the road and UCLA was at home. So I'm trying to figure out a way that no fans, because you can't say no fans hurts the home or hurts the home team because it actually helps Stanford at home. Yeah. But it hurt UCLA at home. So I think it, I think but no Stanford, fans hurts the. Stanford is a homeless team. In the COVID nineteen era, you remember last year they were in Chapel Hill for a little while. They so Stanford were just, not having fans is actually playing into that's hands. playing at home. That's that's like the, the, that's their, like their comfort zone. That's their comfort zone. That's like an extra bone. Okay, there it is. Uh, <laughs> They're a bubble team. But you have no fans in these games. It creates these wonky results. Yeah. That uh, I I I don't like. Meanwhile, Stanford after they beat USC, um, they they come back from a three week COVID pause. Which, like, Stanford got the strain that makes you good at basketball. Because mm. some of these schools, like, Ohio State got the bad strain. Like, yeah. they come back from pause and they're not as good. Um, so Stanford got the good strain, which is, like, again, a little fraudulent. That, like, Omicron can't make up its mind. Yeah. Like, do you want to make guys better shooters or worse? I don't, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, so Stanford comes back from three-week pause, plays in front of no fans. First top five win in 15, almost 15 years for Stanford. Uh, and then they go to Washington State. The game gets postponed for 75 minutes. Did you see did you see this? Did you hear about this? Mm -hmm. Postponed for 75 minutes because Washington State is waiting on a, a a COVID test. So they like just basically are waiting to make sure like all their guys are cleared to play. It messes with the whole It was like waiting for the Pope announcement for the smoke yes. to be white or whatever it is. And then Stanford goes on a 23-0 run in that game, beats yeah. Washington State at Washington State. And I'm just saying it's like all all the fuckery going on with how the can COVID. you money ball when you have these types of yes. things going on? Yes. You can't. There's also this. I, I I crunch the numbers on this one. Are you ready for this? Um, here here's here's the uh, the power conference COVID pause count. So these are th the the number of programs in each conference that have that are either currently on a COVID pause mm. or have been on a COVID pause this season. Um, what would you guess if you were guessing of the six power conferences, uh, the 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 Power Five plus the Big East, obviously. Um, what would you guess is the has the highest percentage of teams that have taken a pause this year? Which conference would you say has the highest percentage? Pac-12. Pac-12. Not even close. 
Pac-12 has had 75%. Nine out of the 12 teams in the Pac-12 have taken a pause at some point. <laughs> what are the three teams that haven't? Do we have that? Well, yeah, I have all of them. What, okay. what, do you, what do you think second? The second conference? Yeah. The Big Ten? No, it's the ACC. Respect. 46.7%. Respect. Seven, seven out of 15. Okay. Then it's the Big East at 45%. Five out of their 11. Mm. Then it's the Big Ten. Five out of their 14. Mm. Then it's the, and then this is why I wanted to point out Michigan that, should count as two. So let's say six. This is why I want to point out that COVID is fraudulent because at the at the bottom of the list of, of the conferences that have had to pause, the SEC has had two out of 14 programs, Missouri and Florida, the only two. The Big 12 has had one. It's TCU. Those are the two best conferences in basketball, probably. I don't know. Maybe you could throw the Big Ten in there, but even even still, the bottom three, the, the, the least pausing conferences, Tate, are the conferences that are the best. So make that make sense to me. Because you know? when you want to play, <laughs> yeah, as it turns out, <laughs> you you find a way. As it turns out, hey, that should be the mod over this. When you want to play, you find. A Isn't way. that hilarious? Yeah, it's it's honestly. Isn't that like the most? Little, isn't that the most fraudulent bullshit you've ever seen? Fraudulent. Like, how is, what how it's is, like? You know, the more that you put this no, these numbers in my face. How was the virus attacking the worst yeah. teams more than the like? Nine out of twelve stuff. is pretty insane for the Pac-12. Nine out of twelve of the Pac-12, one out of ten in the Big Twelve, and two out of fourteen in the SEC. And uh, I, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. That's all. So, uh, oh, moving on. Safe, everybody. Moving on. Number three on the fraud power rankings. You touched on this earlier, Tate. Chris Beard. Woo. Chris Beard is number three on the fraud power rankings. Not necessarily because Texas is uh, uh, Texas is thirteen and three. They they lost at Oklahoma State uh, over the weekend. Um, they're 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 not terrible. They've definitely been a disappointment. Chris Beard is not on on this list because of anything Texas is doing. Chris Beard is on this list because of what Texas Tech is doing. Mm. Uh, that that Chris Beard was a guy who um, was I, like shot to the top of the the power rankings of of college basketball. Yeah, he's the hottest. He's yeah. the hottest name in, in college sexiest, basketball. Sexiest sexiest yeah. name in America. You gotta hire this guy. You must hire. Him. Do whatever you can. Yeah. Move heaven and earth. And the second he takes the Texas job, it's like, man, are we ever what a gonna, hire. Are we ever going to talk about Texas Tech basketball ever again? Mm -hmm. And since that has happened, uh, Texas Tech, the, 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 they don't seem to miss them at all. I mean, they, they three, as I said, three game winning streak over Kansas. Baylor uh, just beat Oklahoma State by twenty one on uh, last night. Um, they're not even fully healthy. Tate, they they they've not missed a beat. They they've actually got better defensively this year than they were last year. Um, so it makes you wonder: was 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 Chris Beard propping up Texas Tech? Did, did Chris Beard make Texas Tech? What or Texas did Texas Tech, Tech make Chris Beard? Exactly. And I think that's what we're exactly. all asking exactly. right now. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to ask that. Mm -hmm. February 1st, uh, Texas at Texas Tech. Circle that on your calendars. What are the chances Texas gets COVID going into that game? Whew. I think that... If Chris Beard, if Texas gets COVID and has to dip out of that game, Chris Beard is number one a fraud, fraud. Yeah. forever for the rest of the season. I think so, too. So I think if you're Texas, you have to do whatever you can to play that game or else you're frauds. Do you think Chris Beard ever looks over at like the, you know, the games and the scores and he sees Texas Tech and just misses it a little bit, you know? Because it was fun being the up-and-comer. Now now you're at the, the place that's supposed to win. Mm -hmm. Everything is you're supposed to. You're supposed to show me something. How long Not of a, a how long of a, a window does he have at Texas to make a Final Four and three years. a national championship? I think Final Four. Well, your four. Final Four is three years. National championship is five years. <laughs> That's just how it works. I'll give him a little more. Texas earlier, is the most yeah. insane. Like as as far as the expectations versus the reality, you know, of the job. Yeah. They every single time they hire a new coach, like when Shaka was there, they were like, "We're going to Final Fours. I know that. It's like, okay, okay. And I think that's the same expectation they have for Chris Beard. Chris Beard's going to take them to the title. He's going to take them to the promised land. And he's a Texas boy. Meanwhile, Texas Tech, uh, Chris Beard at Texas Tech, he I don't think he had to do anything else. I think going to the national championship and losing it was good for 10 years at like, least. Dude, that was, that was sick. pretty sick. <laughs> we were up the whole game. That was... How about their fans, by the their way? Their fans. I, mean, I, I, I can't... The like, whole town like, road, dude. <laughs> When Old Town Rome plays, I just picture like all these rednecks from Lubbock <laughs> putting their pistols out. Pistol and, hands. Dude, that dude, was this guy having the best time. I, I as you know, I was riding the Virginia bandwagon forever and I was very much cheering for Virginia in that game. But like boy, we were in Texas the Virginia fans, section for that game. Texas Tech fans made it hard because they were <laughs> we just we go and awesome. root for good basketball games and they were unbelievable they were in that awesome. game. Mooney was they great awesome. in that game. Culver, I mean, 
And then Hunter, I mean, the pass from Ty Jerome to Hunter to win the game. I mean, it was just a beautifully great all time national title game that will get lost uh, in, in history because uh, it didn't have a blue blood. Basically. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was oh, in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Was, and it was right before the pandemic. So look, it was great. Uh, number two on the fraud power rankings Notre Dame students. Yes. Uh, these people, as you may remember, Tate, last year, Notre Dame students, uh, on March 3rd, Notre Dame plays its first home game in front of students on the, of the year. They get 497 fans in the arena. I, I, I went back and looked up the numbers. They, uh, they, they, they allowed 497 fans of the arena on March 3rd of last year against NC State. Mm. The first game with fans that they had. They lose to NC State for their fourth straight loss. It drops their record to 9-14. and 14. And there are fire bray chants that Sick. emerge sickening from students in the crowd. Fire Gross. bray. Gross. Mike Bray goes in the postgame press conference. He says, that, here's a quote, that was well warranted by our students because that was a poor performance. They should have been on me. So Mike Bray, class God. act. <laughs> the class cl act. Classy. Classy. Oh my God. Classy. Talk about being above in fact, Bray. So <laughs> That's Mike Bray. <laughs> so classy. I think they should hang a banner. Shoo! The Joyce Center that says Mike Bray, class <laughs> act. <laughs> uh, so that was last year. Mike Bray, hot seat. We don't know. Um, that 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 was the situation in Notre Dame basketball. No, this was ignorance from the from the students. Yes. You know what I mean. And now we find ourselves, Tate, less than a year later. Notre Dame is on a six game winning streak. They just smacked Clemson on Wednesday. Uh, they are a half back. They're a uh, half game back of Miami for the top of the ACC standings right now. They have wins over Kentucky and North Carolina, as you know. Uh, <laughs> and Mike Bray, before the Clemson win, goes into the student dining hall, stands on the table, and says, I miss you, sons of bitches. And, like, there's, there's the crowd. The, there's an eruption. And, and he has this, uh, you know, this love affair with the students. And all the students are clapping for him. And it's a, it's a whole thing. After they beat Clemson, he, he, he in the postgame press conference, he says, that he wanted to see if uh, he 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 said he wanted to try to crowd surf. He was like talking about how awesome the crowd was. He's like, I got I'm, one of these times. I'm going to jump into the crowd and have have them crowd surf me all the way to the top <laughs> of the arena. Um, so now all of a sudden we fast forward less than a year later. All of the Notre Dame students love Mike Bray again, and I just want to say that is absolutely fraudulent. You can't you can't say fire Mike Bray and then less than a year later just be in love with this guy. No, I and, I, I think that those 497 students that we should give them some sort of like pin or something to wear that says like, <laughs> I, I am one of the 497 and they should be booed they should and be shamed. Yeah. They should be shamed everywhere they, they go. They should have to wear a sack on their head if they're going to come to a... Yeah, wear a bag on your head wear and said, I'm part of the 497. <laughs> I'm one of the 497. I think Tyler might be one of those 497 kids here. Wait, for real? In Notre Dame. Were you one of the ones call, saying for... What'd you say? Yeah. Graduated oh, Tyler, already. graduated 2018. Let's blame him anyway. Ad admit know. it. He started it. Yeah. He was on that train. Is your brother there? <laughs> Tyler works on our show. He's, he he doesn't have a mic, but we'll we'll really what he's saying. You you graduated Notre Dame twenty eighteen. He said it was a basketball school back then. Be honest. How many fire Mike Bray tweets have you deleted <laughs> in the last? Okay. He does have he's a like, tattoo that Bray. says "Fire Mike Bray." Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. All Mike right. Bray hanging at the oyster he's like, bar. It was a typo. It was higher Mike. Type See, legend. this is this is the problem with your your idea of of identifying the four ninety seven is if you if you go if you can get every single person that's ever attended Notre Dame and ask them which one of you are the four ninety seven, you won't get a single person that raises their hand and says it was me. No one's gonna do it. That's the problem. That's why they're frauds. They're all frauds. I, all I need is the ticket stubs. Give me the <laughs> list. <laughs> if um. Release the stubs. <laughs> if they put Mike Bray's head on the touchdown Jesus, would that make everything all right? <laughs> Think so? No? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. I just love to. <laughs> I just love you looking at Jim. Like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? It's a football thing, Tate. What I know. Oh, it's a God. Basketball school. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Um, oh, I love Moving on. Bray. Number one on the fraud power rankings this week. Uh, we, uh, you, 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 put this idea in my head when uh I did yeah because on the last show you were, you were talking about Armando Baker dominating Virginia and, and oh, you said yeah. that North Carolina had lost seven straight <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah I didn't realize it was that bad no it was bad and you're like I can't s wait to see how the fraud power rankings reflect that we took it to heart Tate and we, we, we followed your lead and at number one on the fraud power rankings 
Roy Williams. <laughs> who could not beat Virginia to save his life. The oh, second this man, man. <laughs> the second this man leaves Chapel Hill. He got he just got a good out good guide by Tony Bennett. You know what I mean? T- Tony Bennett was doing like Roy Williams is doing a Dean Smith impersonation, and then Tony Bennett was like doing it better. You know what I mean? So he just got he got shook by it. Now Roy's free. Uh so Roy, I put Roy at number one for that, kind of. But the real reason Roy's number one on my fraud power rankings is that this is a man who walked away from his job as the head coach of North Carolina unceremoniously. We mm. we were at night. Hey, funny enough, I'm wearing my uh, Hoosiers gym sweatshirt today, but uh we were in Knightstown. Yeah. Uh, for the final four, um, mm. the uh, the day that the news breaks, it just kind of drops it out of nowhere. That Roy, there was no real inkling. I guess April you, Fool's Day. When you go back and look at it, he kissed the middle of the floor. So it's like, was we that a sign? Known. My mom knew. My mom said he was going to retire. But otherwise, there wasn't really any sign that this was happening. He uh, he decides he's going to retire. Then that off season, as we notate, Coach K says this is going to be my final <laughs> year. You kill Coach K. You say, <laughs> of course you're going to announce this before the season, so everyone can kiss your ass all season and talk about how great you are. I scooped it. I scooped Roy it. Williams would never. Roy Williams, when it was time to go, he just walked away. He's not a farewell tour guy. He's not. So explain to me this, Tate. Why is Roy Williams showing up at every arena in college basketball? He loves standing the game. ovations from the crowd. Loves the game. He's from, also, and guess what? The game loves him. Goes to to Kansas. They 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 shower him with love. Then the next night, he's, he's just East buying Kansas. tickets to a basketball game. And then, What's going and then on? they're figuring out that, oh my God, legendary coach Roy Williams in the building. We must give him our due. No. Could you imagine Coach K going to Allen Fieldhouse? What the response would be? That would be amazing. <laughs> Do you imagine if he went to like the Breslin Center and walked in and just started waving like the booze that would erupt <laughs> for Coach <laughs> K? It would be true. unbelievable. So, like the fact that Roy Williams, and I, I will say this the 2009 title game. And I know people forget things, but that 2009 team wrecked everybody. Yes. And the Michigan State team was playing for the city of Detroit. Like the, the you know, the the car crisis. Like That's right. It was in Detroit. It was, it was in Detroit. Yeah. It was like, this is how we saved Detroit. Car crisis. <laughs> you know. Bailout. Bailout. You know. Car. You know. Ford. All that. Bailout. Supply out. chain. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Mortgages. The whole, yeah, the subprime whole, loans. Uh, the whole situation. Fiscal cliff. Yeah, yeah. The big short, you know. Uh, this Bomb. is all happening. All, <laughs> everything everything is going against North Carolina in this game. And they spank Michigan State. For uh-huh. the second time this season, they'd already spanked them earlier. So you would think that wouldn't happen. For that guy that did that to you, to come into that building and then get all the praise and all the love that he did. And then for you to have a game winning moment, you know, a race to 69 moment. Did Joey Hauser at the buzzer? But that that's part of the problem. Come like, on, Roy Michigan Williams. Michigan State was favored by 11 and a half. The night before, Kansas was favored by like I think 13, he's America's 14. coach. I think he's America's coach. And I think Coach K is taking a break right now because he 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 took a misstep. You know what I mean? He was following the lead of Derek Jeter and Kobe in the farewell tour, and he thought that's what he was supposed to do. And Roy's just, he's getting the farewell tour, but in a more organic way lovable but why why are these teams not playing well when he shows up they're playing kansas, great they're winning they're winning in, kansas was favored by like 14 and they no, needed a last second it's a shot show it, it's it's a show it's a show michigan state was favored by game Harris. winners games that you remember forever and all those fan bases are like roy williams jim, come back jim be the come judge back, roy be the judge on it D- does what have, have you seen what roy would like the fact that he went to kansas, kansas won, Michigan and then the state next won. night he's in michigan state and he, he was in the lot the michigan state locker room talking yeah. to players all that yeah does this feel like a farewell tour to you? Like it's almost like an encore tour. Yes. But also it reminds me of like when someone graduates high school and then they keep coming to all the parties after. <laughs> yeah. Like what after? You They're know? at prom. They're the 21 year old at prom. Yep. Like what the hell is buying going kids on here? beer? Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Giving kids money to go to UNC. I can't believe I can't believe how cool Roy Williams is. I really I mean, I already <laughs> already knew that he was the coolest, but like I just can't believe I'm that days and confused. I just I just cannot believe how cool he is <laughs> all right let's uh let's move on to shout out to close up before we do we got we got another sponsored segment dude how about yeah. us dude, oh the bag is dropping left <laughs> yeah. right around around these parts i can't believe it the 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 duffel bag boys are, are back dude this is so exciting uh the big 10 stat of the week brought to you by discover when it comes to your credit card discover <laughs> believes in having real people available 24 7 to help answer your questions discover exceptionally common sense uh, if you are familiar with the show, you know how the Big Ten Stat of the Week, Big Ten Stat of the Day, how it works. 
um, we we are looking for stats that are just arbitrary that have a thousand cutoff points that mm -hmm. the Big Ten more than any other conference loves putting these out. They love. Yeah, uh, I saw like John Neil Armstrong spent a hundred and ten percent more time on the moon than any other man. In Purdue any other conference. Purdue is the only school to both have a women's swimming top fifteen AP poll rank <laughs> and an alum land on the moon. Yeah, like you're like. Cool. Got him. <laughs> Big Ten stat of the day. Uh, Johnny Davis had a good one when he when they they won in Mackey Arena. I forget what it was, but like I saw the Wisconsin was tweeting out like all the the first guy with twenty seven points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four rebounds. They go all the way down. They'll it's be crazy. like less than four turnovers. Yeah. Uh, so we 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 love those stats. Uh, because again, like the Big Ten, it, it, I think the Big Ten's guilty of this because they, you know, every other conference is like we won the national title last year. Like the Big Twelve is like we have Kansas. And we also have the defending national title team. Yeah. Like, that's all that really needs to be said. No. but And then the ACC is like, we won every <laughs> national title ever. And the SEC is like, we just started caring about basketball, and we still had Florida go back-to-back. -back. Like, this is how all these other conferences talk. Mm -hmm. And the Big Ten's like, all that may be true, <laughs> but our GPA <laughs> yeah, plus... Yeah. But check win. this out. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, to celebrate that, we're doing Big Ten Stat of the Week. Tate, do you want to go first? What is what is one that you found? Yeah, this like, is my Big Ten Stat of the Week. I mean, there's so many to choose from. I, I thought I was going to go with an EJ Liddell one, but I don't think we want to talk about Ohio State basketball because of the last you know game that they played. So we'll we'll leave that away. That will not be my Big Ten Stat of the Week because we're going to keep it positive. Instead, I'm going to go to my Maryland Terrapins, a team that I'm in love with now that they're out of Turgatory. And I don't know if you knew this, Titus, but Maryland is one of four schools that won a 2021-22 bowl game, okay. a 2021 men's basketball NCAA tournament game, and a 2021 women's basketball NCAA tournament game. Fear the turtle. One of four schools yes. to have won a bowl a, game. A bowl game this season. Yes. But then tournament games last, last season. season. <laughs> one of four. One of four. <laughs> Top, 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 top stuff. You're not going to see it anywhere else other than the Maryland Terrapins. Fear the turtle. Big Ten stat of the week. Congratulations. Hang the, hang the banner. That's going to be banner. a long banner to yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> explain that. Yeah. Uh, my, my Big Ten stat of the week that I pulled, uh, courtesy of the Iowa Hawkeyes uh, basketball program, retweeted this from College Basketball Reference. Uh, th this is a little more straightforward, but it, it's it, it it's in the family of Big Ten Stat of the Week. So here we go. The most points per game scored by in-state players. Oh, I like that. Iowa is third in the country. At 61.3 points per game. So this means that these are kids from Iowa that play at Iowa, and they yeah. make up 61% of the scoring for Iowa. They make up 61%. They are third. Who's number one? St. <laughs> Thomas from Minnesota. Wow. Uh, who's Minnesota's first, got first some season, sneaky talent, by the way. First season in Division One. I. I don't. I don't think this is representative of talent because, like, we don't. What is St. Thomas's record? We don't even know if they're. We don't know. Just, <laughs> we don't know. There's. We don't have the technology to to know that. We don't have the. All we know is. Can't. All we know is there's a lot of guys that wanted to play there. You know, they ended up uh, going to Stanford and other places. <laughs> uh, St. Thomas is number one at 65 points per game from uh, in-state players. UCLA is number two. Oh yeah, all 64. that. 64.6. Compton Magic, baby. Yeah. And then number three is Iowa. What does it mean? No idea. No idea. We have no idea. But Keegan Murray, yeah. by the way, leads the country in points per game. So uh, shout out to him. Chris he, Murray had a went nuts against Indiana last night. Indiana could be undefeated if they wanted, but they're they've also lost four and because it, they just can't get out of their own way. Well, Mike Woodson yeah. won't wear a suit. I don't understand. Really, yeah. I think I think Indiana fans are officially over that stat. By the way, I don't think it's cute to them anymore. I think they thought it was like funny at first. They're like, "Oh, this is." Kind now of, they're actually now they're mad like, about it. They're like, "Wear a they're suit." Like, For goddamn sake! <laughs> yeah, they're like getting mad at Mike Woods. He's like, "Hold on." Why? Why is every game on the road winnable and in the palm of our hand, and we hand about hand it over to the other team? Why does this keep happening? This yeah. is fun or funny. Yeah, fix it. I'm not having fun anymore. <laughs> Uh, that was a fun segment, though. Big I love Big Ten Stat of the Week. week. That's, that's a great segment. <laughs> that's something Shout that, out to Discover. Yeah, I know. When you pitch something to these brands, you think there's no way they take that one. But the fact that whoever worked at Discover was like, I got a great segment for these guys. Yeah. Big Ten Stat of the Week. Everyone's like, what? Is this the Big Ten Network? We love it. Oh, we love uh, it. All right. Shout outs, closeouts. Let's wrap it up. Uh, I want to shout out to Charles Barkley. He had my favorite quote and my favorite. Uh, the other night on uh, NBA on TNT, we were talking about Zion. Zion, I don't know if you've, this is a Zion Williamson update and a shout out. He's in Portland now. They they have moved Zion to Portland. Nike oh, for, has. for his rehab? Or for his rehab, which is like, you know, Greg, whenever I see 
Portland and rehab, That's, I immediately yeah, start thinking of Greg, and I'm I like, this is not what I want to see. But anyway, Zion's in Portland. Charles Barkley made the quip that uh, there's also food in Portland. Um, you know, so he made well, that. Like joke. I said, dude, like I, I, I understand the the idea that he's got to get out of a city with great food, but I think that's all myth. I think that's, that's all. The, yeah. Like I said, dude, like the, the, the fattest I've ever been is when I've lived in places with shitty food. Yeah. So that doesn't add up. And when you're cold and it's rainy, yeah. what do you want to do? Eat food. Eat. Yeah. Yeah, hot food inside. So I don't see that. But anyways, Barkley, his, his diet advice to Zion, he said, if it tastes good, spit it out. And I think... Oh. <laughs> I just think that's like the best... That's like, you know, that that's age-old wisdom right there, you know? And I think that, that might be the way to get Zion back. I mean, it really is a good rule. I mean, if you, if you take a bite of something, you're like, that tastes too damn out. good, spit it out. Zion becomes bulimic. <laughs> No, you just got to find something that doesn't taste as good. You spit it out, and you're like, all right. Almost. I love the idea of Zion Williamson, like, plugging his nose and closing his eyes as he's, like, eating every dinner for the next... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I do love the... Char Charles is a good guy to comment on this, too. Right? I think like, Charles is like, the expert. I really... Yeah. I really, The round mound of rebound. Yes. I mean, he is the expert. He is the guy that you talk to. And I think Zion could use some of those guys actually trying to help him out. Yeah. I, th I think you shouldn't be able to vote unless you've been fat before. I think like being fat gives you perspective on life. And, yeah. Um, I, I, I really do. I think that's my stance on that. Uh, I want to shout out the uh, Michigan Wolverines basketball program, who I may or may not have accused of dodging Michigan State and Purdue. Ducking. Um, I don't know. They were ducking. I was just I was just laying out the facts. That was all. Make your own conclusions. Were but, they upset uh, about this? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think I had a lot of. Uh, I had. I don't know. <laughs> Michigan fans will listen. No, uh, I had some Michigan people that were like, you know, I. I don't think I. I. I they. They said we're. Because. Uh, because I, I. I said they're either evil or like or sinister or whatever. Where they're like actually intentionally yeah. dodging teams. They're dumb. Like they don't know how to manage COVID because like this is COVID seems to be messing them up more than any other program, or they're just unlucky. And a lot of the Michigan people seem to uh, fall on dumb. Was what they said. They're like our president. Like, what we got going on here is stupid. Everyone's blaming the administration. Yeah, it's the administration. Which, like, um, if there's something to blame in college sports, it's the best people to blame. But to, to the point that they're not sinister, that they're not dodging. I, uh, Michigan, Illinois is apparently a go tonight. So tonight, knock on wood. Michigan at Illinois. If they, if Michigan did not play Illinois, they were 100 percent dodging. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. But they, uh, it is a go. So knock on wood that that game's gonna happen. And, uh, and if you're Jawan Howard and you're Michigan, yeah. you're like, if we lose this game, it's okay. We can lose one. You know, it was more about dodging the stretch. This is, uh, I, I have, this uh, is one you're okay to lose. I, I, if, if Illinois wins the, the Michigan basketball tweet, that's like tough one in Champaign. And then they put the, you know, like, you know how the, the yeah. programs do that. And then like yeah. Auburn fans have, have like gone nuts about this, by the way, that they reply to the, the team that loses tweets out the score and then they reply to it, you know? That's gonna be a shit show of Illinois fans in <laughs> Michigan. Michigan tweets out the the final score. Michigan loses. You know, yeah. tough battle. It replies. Yeah, tough battle in Champagne. Gonna be insane. So grab your popcorn and look for that. Illinois and Michigan State both five and zero in the Big Ten. How about that? Yeah. How about that? Uh, any battle. other shout outs? No, that's all I really got. Shout out Gonzaga, say. 110 points on BYU. It could have been worse. Shout out to John Rostein. Did you see that he said that Gonzaga would have beaten the? Oh, that's right. Yeah, was the 96, 96 Bulls? Bulls. Yeah. That's a great debate. We should have that debate. <laughs> we should do that next show. Gonzaga or the 96 Bulls. Jim, who are you taking? Gonzaga. <laughs> you know what we should do? Let's play that game in 2K. How do we do that? Let's go Let's go get that loaded up. We'll play that game. I think that Jordan has 60 in the first half on Gonzaga. Yeah. How, but, it's, but I think Drew Timmy. Who's stopping Drew, Drew Timmy? Drew Timmy has 30 boards. <laughs> Chet Holmgren has so ah! much size. <laughs> Luke Longley is going to be playing these people. Tony Kukoc versus Chet Holmgren is pretty hilarious. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Oh, God. Uh, Rodman Jim, versus Jim, Timmy. You, you got any time. shout outs before we go? Nah. That's it. No Donda updates? No, nothing. No, not really. All right. All right good. That's fine. I haven't watched them. All right. That's the. Uh, <laughs> I think Kanye quit on basketball. I think he's too focused on Julia Fox. Wait, who's, Julia he, Fox. who's he dating now? Like some Julia Fox from Uncut, Uncut Gems. 
Oh, she's the... Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I know. Now you remember. Apparently, she was with Pete Davidson before, so this is like his no. way to get back. Oh, stop. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's, that's like the whole... Oh, oh poor Kanye. I know. That's Kanye, what I said. No. I think he's down bad, man. We get, we're like... We're, uh, we need him to come on the show know to he, talk he, about he, basketball. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he allegedly punched someone yesterday outside a club. Yeah, a fan. Yeah, outside Soho House. A fan. Yeah. It was downtown. Like, with them. Yeah, and now he's like leaving LA to focus on Coachella. You know, get your mind right. Yeah. And he's also not Kanye anymore. He's yay. So, all right, it's too all much. Right, my bad. <laughs> it's too much. Allegedly, <laughs> and this is why we need. This is why we need Jim to stay on top of this. I know he needs he someone to stay on top of the well, basketball side of things. He was out. He was at a recording studio with Julia Fox, Madonna, Floyd Mayweather, and Antonio, Antonio Brown. Brown. Yeah. Just hanging out. But that's is a this crew. the start of a joke. No, no. that was them. That was just their crew <laughs> hanging out like two nights ago. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm sure. I Dude. mean, that must have been good. They probably gave him some good advice. Antonio Brown. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did the Rams sign Antonio Brown? Because I feel like they might. That could happen. Uh, I think LeBron. Donda, Donda, <laughs> Donda football. Donda football. <laughs> Antonio Brown's a new. Donda coach. football. Uh, oh, yeah. Good. Uh, uh, Donda I need you to your homework between now and next week <laughs> is to to give us a G League update as well, Jim. Because uh, has the season started? Has the G League season started? Well, Add it's basically it. the NBA now because all their players are just oh, pulled right. up in yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. That's the update. <laughs> the G League you can watch the G League on TNT with Charles Barkley. G League Ignite versus the 96 Bulls. G League Ignite versus the 95 Bulls. No Jordan. Or Jordan. No, it is Jordan, but it's like. Who's the coach of the G Ignite League now? beat the Do Jaguars we? in football? <laughs> I don't know. Was it Kevin Ollie's right. the coach of the G League Ignite? No, he's at o uh, overtime, right? Or the overtime oh, he's league, overtime. League slash. I can't keep up. God, I that was the problem with all these leagues, you know? We already had enough to keep up with. We can't keep up with all this unless we have Jim. Not everybody has Jim, you know, to keep up with these. Here's a here's a here's uh, another update, uh, an alternative basketball, the professor from Man One Mixtape Tour. Oh, yeah, he's the best. Uh, Love him. I, I, had it, I had it pointed out to me that uh, he lives in Marina Del Rey as well. Yeah, he's a Venice what? guy. I didn't know that. Let's get him Dude, on the he's, show. He's on the Venice courts all the time. If you go to Venice, like, you know, you're at Venice Ale House, you just like walk down a little bit, those little courts right there. Yeah. You'll see, I saw him one time in the Bugs Bunny outfit <laughs> <laughs> shooting the thing. No, he wouldn't do that. That was probably TJS. No, that was him in the Bugs Bunny. <laughs> really? Yeah. Professor is yeah. surprised. Uh, the we professor? gotta get. It. We gotta. Yeah. So I'm gonna walk into a bar and the professor and worldwide Wild are gonna be there. Get <laughs> yeah. Get him on the show. Just make sure he comes three hours early to get tested. <laughs> like every parking lot structure in this place. I I get so lost today. <laughs> I literally I was so down out. Uh, thank you to Kenny Blakeney for for giving us some time. Thank you to <laughs> thank Tate you, Coach for, Howard. Uh, <laughs> Coach Howard. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, watch watch the Howard game. It's gonna be awesome, actually. Howard Notre Dame Purdue Illinois is the mm. lead in. So you're mm. gonna be watching the Purdue Illinois game anyway. That's gonna be a great game. Uh, just keep your television on. Watch and Notre, Dame Notre Dame is trying to be a tournament team this year. So yeah. yeah, we can just straighten up their fraudulent fans that they have over there. <clears throat> yeah. No, <laughs> uh, enjoy the weekend. See you guys next week. Thanks.